Real Ghost Stories Online. When you have something paranormal happening to you and you want to share it with someone, not only is it therapeutic to do so and highly recommended, that's partly why our show exists, but, you know, talking to a close loved one, a friend, a family member, something like that, can also be extremely helpful because you just want to be believed. You want to be understood. You want to know that you are, in fact, of sound mind. But there's not always that opportunity there to to share with someone else, especially if the things that you want to share really defy belief, defy experiences that most have had. Many people who very staunchly believe in ghosts and spirits have had an experience in their life that they can relate to when someone shares their story, howbeit, however similar or non-similar it may be, they still understand that feeling of not being believed, of I don't know how I'm going to say this out loud. That's what goes on in our next story. A family, actually a man, begins his life in an apartment that is extremely haunted. Strange things happening left and right. Unexplainable things, sometimes very dark things. But it doesn't end when he moves out. It continues to follow him and his new wife and their child into a place they so desperately want to call home. Take a listen. I spent most of my life in and out of haunted houses and strange paranormal experiences. I have more accounts than I can share in a single email. When I was younger, I was babysat at a house in India. A woman haunted the house. I'd be sleeping when you would hear footsteps walk up the stairs. We'd leave the house for food and all the locked doors and windows would be wide open. I recall terrifying accounts that stay with me to this day. The first was I was skeptical about the haunting, mostly out of fear when I was using the bathroom. I was on the toilet when I saw the handle of the sink turning on its own slowly. But it seemed like when I noticed it, the other handle was turned in an almost rage. Then the door flung open. I had no idea what to do. So I just sat there as my aunt gave me and I told you so look. I remember being downstairs when I heard my cousin and sister screaming. I ran up the stairs to see clothes being flung around the room by nothing. The haunting, to my understanding, still goes on there, although at least I know it was daycare. My next really haunting experience would come when I got older. When I was about 20, my grandmother died, and my uncle had left the house. He moved to Georgia, so he asked me if I'd live there to keep the house up to keep. So I did with my friend and then eventually another friend. When we moved in, there was a foul odor. One, I would come to associate with bad things. It smelled of death. And eventually, it went away. We thought maybe something had crawled under the exceedingly small porch and died like a snake or a rodent. Well, things went on and we would hear strange sounds the first couple of days. We would have cabinets left open, but we were young. We just thought it was each other. And the first major event happened. I was lying in the living room. My roommate and I, at the time, both slept on the couches. Although we had rooms mostly from the unease of the place, I was lying there about to fall asleep when I felt something push me to the couch. A weight could not get off me. I could not move them. I was seemingly punched in the face three times by nothing. It left three knuckle prints on my right cheek. I did not sleep the rest of that night and left to my parents' house to sleep. My mom noticed that I was shaken up, but did not ask until I woke up what was going on. More things continued to happen after a friend had his ear growled in. We would hear yelling in the house by no one. I couldn't shower without the TV on because I would hear conversations in my living room that I could not quite make out, though no one was home. I didn't sleep in my room because it felt as though you were never alone, and my feeling was only confirmed when I invited a third person in. He was down on his luck and needed a place to stay, so I offered him my room to him and said I'd sleep on the couch. Came out one night asking if he could sleep out in the living room too, and I asked him why. He said he felt like something was watching me, and something was petting my head and stroking my hair. 
He went on to have another experience in the house that scared him into eventually leaving. He was in the bathroom where we had an old school towel hanger on the drapes over the top of that door. It can be moved, but not all that easily. Well, he was using the toilet when the towel rack started flying back and forth across the door, and the towel sprang up into the air onto his head. When he peeked out from under the towel, the hanger continued to slide back and forth across the door. He came out freaking out and asked if we were messing with him. We didn't even know what was happening. People would hear guitars being strung. The thing would fall over and break without being touched. We had to have three sets of house keys because they would constantly be moved and hidden in places no one had been in, like under beds that did not sleep in the refrigerator or storage cabinets. They would disappear. And then, under the couch cushions... It had been checked when several things went missing. Several apparitions had been seen on the property. I saw a man who liked to stand in my room, get out by the bait in the yard. The one that spooks me the most was, I was home alone and I walked past my roommate's room, which was near the kitchen. I walked past and saw a woman with dark black hair and dark clothes standing and looking away. I walked past and then stopped, looked back, and no one was there. I was once waiting for a friend to come by. I went to take a shower. It was midway through when I heard what sounded like someone kick my door in, stomp the distinct three times, and shout my name. I jumped out of the shower to see the door closed, and no one was there. I called my firm to ask if anyone had come by, and he had not yet left his house. One of the final encounters that came to me was when I had a friend with some low-level ghost equipment come over, looking for EVPs. In one of those ghost tracker apps. Well, we decided to lock down the night and turn the lights out and call it out. It started out as you'd expect. We had the app on and I said, oh my, there are ghosts, but the things coming through were not standard. We had things like enjoying your skin and the doors open and demon come through, which I mean, we were laughing about it. And then we moved to put the equipment in the center of the house. And as we were standing up and setting up, you heard a woman scream that we did not hear. It would cut to a voice that was not our repeating my name. We only found out after review later the worst thing was when we went to my room and sat there on my bed and started asking it to do something, anything to prove it was heard. My friend said, if you're real, open this door. Open it right now. That's when we heard what sounded like someone coming to the front door. And then again, like before, someone kicks my door open and stomped three times right up to the door. We were behind in my room. We ran out and nothing was there. There were a lot of other things and experiences. I tore my friendships down and put a lot of strain in my life. I'd eventually leave the state with my new girlfriend and move into my next haunted place. I did not search these places out. Something just appears to follow me wherever I go. Well, we moved to Reno, Nevada. And when we moved in, I smelt an awfully familiar smell that smelt of death. I did not know much about the paranormal still at this point. But we cast it as a link or a leak in the sink that we saw, and maybe that was the cause. The smell went away, and we had our new loft to ourselves. Hints that it was pleasant at first, but there was an eerie feeling in the upstairs. We found out shortly after my wife was pregnant, and we made our loft into a dual nursery and bedroom for us. The upstairs bathroom was a small bedroom with a shower and toilet. Then outside the door, it had vanities. It was always reasonably hot, even though we had an AC unit right there in the room, Little things happened at first. Light bulbs near that bathroom always burnt out within a couple of weeks. But, you know, all can be explained away. We got a puppy and we were all about training it and having it around when the first really disturbing thing happened that caught both my and my wife's attention. I had my normal feelings of unease in the place and suspicion, but I tried to keep it from my pregnant wife. But I heard whispering coming from upstairs near the bathroom. And I asked my wife if she heard it. She was about to say... And the puppy's normal, rambunctious, playful nature suddenly changed. They stopped and looked directly as to where I heard it. Things had progressed from there. We almost never slept up there. I would have horrible dreams of that bathroom, as would my wife normally seeing, though, though what seemed like the previous tenant's eyes, the black mass that filled me full of terror so much I would scream while asleep. We slept on our pull-out couch most nights downstairs. We had my other dog flown in from Indiana, and a few weeks later, and that is when more things started to get worse. 
We were once downstairs and the dogs ran upstairs and started frantically digging at the wall near the bathroom and the barking almost was maddening. They tore through this wall, which seemed like no time at all. And then this behavior was thing something they had never, ever displayed before, digging through a wall. My other dog, Spacey, who came from Indiana, was locked in the bathroom by an unknown force. It scared her enough to make her yelp very loud. We came up the stairs. My wife and I constantly fought for almost no reason. There was just such a thick hate inside the house. The night my son was born, we had to leave the dogs. There were several complaints and a note left on our door by the police. The dogs apparently were howling, yelping, and they thought we were abusing them. The puppy actually digged through the carpet to the cement underneath as if trying to burrow out of the physical home. Things between my wife and me were getting worse and she remained skeptical until the baby started focusing on things that were not there. She started seeing the mobile move and start playing in its own. She was taking a shower when her towel was taken out of the bathroom, somehow through a closed door. She saw the towel after she had hung it up on the door and when she came out, it was gone. She found it outside the bathroom door on the floor. The door was shut so she was shaken and did not tell me about it until much later, trying to figure out if she had just misremembered. The final thing that put her over the edge, though, was she was feeding the baby, and we had one of those swivel-top small trash cans upstairs to throw away tissue and other small things. Well, she was feeding him when she saw the top of the can flip up almost halfway, dead stop, and then come gently back down as if someone had picked up the lid and let it down. There was no back and forth that would happen if someone tossed and walked away or if there was a breeze that hit it, something moved it with the sole purpose of making her notice. We moved out a couple of months later. I've had several minor encounters since, but nothing to suggest a total haunting. A couple of pictures with orbs in it and nightmares of black masses, things moving on their own, but I mostly ignore them to move on with life. It seems to be working for now. If you'd like to know more, I have more to talk about. I have several witnesses who can account for these horrible encounters. I am in sound mind. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Want a commercial-free experience of the show with access to the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories? Sign up at Apple Podcast right now and try it for three days free. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories.